This video is sponsored by Mark 7 Equipment, shaping the future of all things car wash. Visit mark7.net for more information. Welcome back to Unscripted, carwash.com's video interview series that connects you with market leaders. Joining me today on Unscripted, we have Jonathan McGrady, Senior Training Consultant, uh, Steve Goudreau, President, and Patrick Jeshuel, Corporate Vice President, all from Brink Results. Gentlemen, it's great to see you all today, and, and thanks for doing this video interview with me. Thank you. Happy to do it. Thank you for having us. Sure thing. So following up on a, uh, a recent article that your, uh, your company um, submitted and, and we published in our, our magazine in the December issue of Professional Car Washing and Detailing, and, and it was how to really get more, more members involved in your, in your membership plans and attract more uh, new members to your, to your wash. So the title of that article was, was how to get 10,000 members per site. So Steve, I'm curious, obviously not all car washes are, are created the same here. So what are some of the baseline requirements in terms of, uh, of equipment or number of locations in a region, maybe site size, et cetera, to, uh, to serve 10,000 members per site? Okay, well, first thing to understand is that there are really very little in terms of physical requirements. Uh, needed, okay? And I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rank uh, those physical requirements in terms of what your preference you'd like to have. But let me give you an example. There's a car wash uh, with a client of ours in California that does over 16,000 members at that location. It's a 70 foot tunnel. It has no visibility from the street. It's very short uh, behind a convenience store. Uh, and you'd say this is the least likely wash to ever do that kind of numbers. So uh, it's it's really not critical, okay? However, that said, okay, uh, let's talk about each of the areas, what, what you would like, okay? So for example, number of locations. Is it helpful to have multiple locations to increase your membership? Absolutely. The stronger the brand name, the more options I have as a customer to go to your washes, that's great. But if you're a one location wash, you can hit 10,000 members, okay? So that's not, not a restriction. Uh, second area is the, the uh, length of the tunnel. Is it easier to process a high number of vehicles with a 120 foot tunnel in there? Absolutely. Okay, would I wanna do that over an 80 foot or a 70 foot? Yes. So you just have to be better at processing vehicles. And, and also the length of the, of the conveyor tells you the quality of the product, you know, how, how clean the car will come out, how shiny, how dry. If you're running cars through at a high volume, uh, those cars, a lot of those cars are gonna be pretty wet when they come out of the exit end. Uh, so um, that it's the commitment to volume uh, that transcends sometimes the, the, the total quality of the vehicle you're getting. That's what the length of the tunnel has to do with. So a lot longer length, get excellent quality and high volume is what you want, obviously. Number of pay stations, I think, is probably the most critical area physically. Um, three pay stations is ideal, okay, that, that's fine. Uh, hard to make a case for a fourth one, and very rarely do you have any room to do that. Um, two pay stations, it's, it's doable. You can do 10,000 members with two pay stations. We've seen it done, it's doable. Uh, one pay station, really, really tough. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's done it. We just haven't seen it, I don't think. Have we? No. I have not. Not yet. <laughs> uh, I've seen one that's got um, 3,500 members. Yep. Uh, you know, which is still a lot higher than most people's uh, average. So it isn't like a total block, but 10,000, no, I'm not, uh, not going to, don't put me down for that. Okay. Um, all right. I answer your question. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay, good. Now, now you open that uh, that article discussing the change in mindset. Obviously, pricing is, is such an important uh, factor when it comes to attracting and retaining members. So, uh, you opened up the article uh, discussing a change in mindset and, and the importance of pricing. So, what are some of the main reasons, Steve, that that operators struggle uh, when when looking at overcoming uh, ticket average concerns? The whole history of the industry, uh, owners and operators, is looking at um, the dollar per car, okay? That's what they're used to, okay? 
So it's a, uh, you, you've got that going on. You still look at dollar per car, but you look at it in two different directions, members and non-members. And I would say for non-members, pretty much the same criteria you've always had for dollar per car stays. For membership, it's a different situation altogether. But here's what happens. Most um, car washes do, that have an unlimited wash club do not have a high membership. Okay, I think it, yeah, the, uh, the range that we see most people uh, when they first, uh, first couple of years they started is 1,000 to 1,500 members. If you have a low number of members, you're mostly signing up the people that were coming frequently anyway, and you're just, and you're lowering your dollar per car, okay? To really make it worthwhile, you have to focus in on membership, increasing that membership. Now, you still, uh, it'll level off with a dollar per car because at a certain point as you get bigger and bigger, as you get 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, now you're pulling in the infrequent customer who didn't come that often before to become more frequent, okay? So instead of coming once a month, they might come in twice a month, and that's pretty much uh, you know, and, and your average per car is okay. Uh, so it's the number of members uh, that make that then more favorable in terms of dollar per car. But that said, you're still going to have a significant gap. What would you say, guys? About four or five dollars difference between a member versus non-member. You still have a gap there, but you got to think, you know, in, in that duality of uh, members versus non-members. So larger membership is really the key to that all working well. And as I did in the article, uh, the, the classic example is, uh, you know, you want 5,000 members at 20 bucks. Okay, that's $100,000 a month. Um, you know, or do you want the, you know, 3,000 at, at 25 bucks to get $75,000. So it's like a, um, uh, you know, there's a higher revenue per car, a higher revenue per month. <laughs> okay, revenue, uh, the, the larger your membership gets. I think if I could just add something real quick, and, and Steve sure. said it, but it just if operators can just switch their minds a little bit to, to focusing on volume, and we talk about this all the time, the more, the more people that come to your wash, the less people are going to your competition, right? And this, this business has gotten so competitive, especially over the past five or six years with folks that are opening up next door across the street, down the block. The more people, the better pricing that you have, the more attractive your wash becomes, the more people come to you. The more people come to you, the less people go to your competition. That's how you insulate yourself against anybody that's coming in. And we're, we're talking about a big number, obviously, just for simple math, because I chose a career in, in words, so we'll use simple math here. But uh, even at nineteen ninety nine, you know, 20 bucks for a membership plan at 10,000 10, members, that's 200,000 dollars just secure uh, secure revenue every month so instead of looking at the at the small you know picture you need to look step back and take a look at the bigger picture of, of how much how much revenue here is uh, are these membership plans uh, growing so uh patrick if i could keep you in the spotlight here for a second i uh, wanted to to move to marketing a little bit and i know uh, the article mentioned the importance of marketing and getting new members to sign up uh, obviously, on-site marketing through signage at, at multiple eye levels, maybe, and at critical points of the wash process uh, is going to be important. Um, but there's a bigger opportunity in, in the article that you wrote, uh, noting that there's a bigger opportunity in off-site marketing that may, maybe many operators aren't maximizing. So, Patrick, uh, can you please provide some effective examples of off-site marketing uh, for membership specifically that operators should consider? Sure. Um, I think first and foremost is, is billboards. Um, right, whether they be digital or standardized billboards, um, I have seen and we have seen uh, wonderful returns um, on on folks that are uh, getting billboards out there. And specifically, I'm, I'm thinking about a digital billboard right now. And what they did was they were doing 17 days of free car washing. And uh, on that digital billboard, which was uh, less than a mile uh, down the road, the same side, um, uh, they had a countdown that I thought was wonderful, right? So for all the customers that were coming down, they see, you know, today we're starting free car washes, we're opening, grand opening, great. Then the next day it was 16, the next day it was 15, the next day it was 14. So 
they just they, they kept going down with their brand. Uh, and again, I guess we'll, we'll talk about brand awareness in a second. But uh, billboards, certainly number one. I think another thing, too, is direct mail pieces. Um, I know in a lot of other industries, uh, perhaps the rate of return is not as high, but I will tell you in this business and the operators that I've talked to, it is not uncommon uh, to get anywhere between eight to 12 to 13% return um, on, on something pretty basic, right? Direct mail piece that just says, you know, free car wash or, uh, you know, first month uh, unlimited car wash is $9.99 or, you know, whatever the promotion is going to be. Um, with direct mail, we've seen a, a pretty significant return on investment with that um, in a lot of areas. And I think the, the other big one that comes to mind is, is social media, right? And I know that everybody has, you know, some form of uh, social media um, identifying a person to run it. I think has, has been one of the challenges that, that you know, we've seen um, somebody that can consistently uh, come up with new messaging and, and interact with potential customers and, and getting followers, uh, you know, if you will, to that page. Um, super important, right? Uh, anytime branding and, and getting your business out there. And getting people to understand that I'm not just going to the car wash, you know, down on Main Street, I'm going to Brink Results Car Wash or XYZ Car Wash. Getting them to be able to verbalize that to their friends, to their family, drives that additional traffic to the site and creates those relationships that ultimately you need to build one way or the other if you're going to get to 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 members, um, given that level of service. So um, those are the main ones uh, that come to mind. Steve John. Okay, no, good. good. All right, sounds good. Well, you also mentioned in the article uh, that once a car wash achieves 5,000 members, you know, getting to 10,000 becomes a lot easier. So, Jonathan, I'm curious, why is that? It's, uh, there's so many of the, the same formula to get to 5,000 that will take you to 10,000 as well. And uh, really, the article, it speaks a lot about the mindset and changing that. And so many car washes, they talk about, you know, it's a service. It's what we're providing to the customers. And now we're focusing things on uh, still a service, but we're a subscription-based business. And that's, that's a huge change in attitude to the successful companies that reach 5,000 and ultimately 10,000. Um, another thing that, that we see a lot of are the goals. They're clear, concise goals because, hey, at the end of the day, 10,000, that's a big number for anybody. So how do we break that down into more bite-sized pieces for our personnel? And the, the third thing really we talked about in the, there as well is coverage. We have to have people at the pay stations talking about a clear, concise message, and it's got to be consistent. That, that's, that's such a big thing. And that mindset and the attitude that comes back into it as well uh, of having those people that are upbeat talking about that consistent message. Mm -hmm. uh, those keys to success. That's part of uh, really getting from five to 10,000. If I can just add one point sure. too, I think um, well said, John, the, that um, oftentimes people build uh, up to 3,500, 5,000. That's, that's kind of where they stall out right in there. And one of the reasons is they build it pretty much through promotions, okay? Uh, not by what people are saying at the pay stations as much uh, and not by training uh, the people effectively to, to, to give pretty much a consistent message, but different promotions. And after a while, you can over promote too much. Some promotions once in a while are great. If you promote all the time and that's really the only way you're building membership, it's gonna be hard for you to reach 10,000. So promotions to lay the foundation, it sounds like, and then these all these other best practices to, to grow it is what I'm hearing. Well, not exactly. I, or okay. I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't build the foundation on the promotions. I do those occasionally, okay? Uh, what I'd really build it on is the interaction between your people at the pay station and the customers. Uh, the, the, the simpler and clearer that is. Um, and again, you got to remember, uh, those people out there have to... Uh, you know, deal with non-members as well, uh, and, and the um, deal with members as well as non-members. And you know, greeting out there, being a positive force, not selling, overselling, 
uh, you want more of a customer service focus. Uh, that's, that is what takes you up to heart large numbers like 10,000, not coming up with a different promotion every month. All right, certainly, uh, and it sounds like it requires an, an investment in, in training and people and promotions and social media marketing and billboards. And, you know, it requires a little bit of, a, of an investment to run a successful uh, sure. membership program. Sure. Certainly, so, sir. Certainly, so. so, Steve, uh, speaking about investments, are there, uh, are there any mistakes or, or expensive mistakes? that you've seen operators make uh, when either starting or, or manage, uh, managing a membership program that our viewers should be mindful of? Yes, I, probably one of the most frequent, although it's starting to change now, was too high a pricing. You know, people uh, just price their plans so expensively, uh, three times what it costs. So people would have to come three or four times a month in order for it to be, uh, to be worthwhile. Uh, now, it's, the standard has moved towards two times the cost of a non-member uh, of a package uh, to one and, a half, one and a half to two times. And that, that's the kind of pricing level you know, that you're looking at. So high pricing is, is something that's very interesting. On the lowest package, um, 1999 has become almost standard in the industry. Uh, and um, uh, having your, lower, uh, your lowest uh, package be a few dollars less than your competition, like any uh, business, uh, a little lower price can make a difference as far as that goes. So, but the key thing is staying away from too high a pricing. Um, the second thing is just what you talked about uh, is there is not much investment made in having people cover the pay stations all the time, as well as their training. You, you not only have to put people out there, you've got to show them what to do. Uh, and you've got to make sure that they're following it and it's a customer friendly uh, message. It's, you know, if you're talking about a membership, it's gotta be very brief. We're talking seconds here, not minutes, <laughs> okay? Uh, and uh, that level of training, uh, you know, is very rare. Uh, I've had the experience uh, as we do a lot of uh, site assessment, site analysis part of our business. We go visit competition when we're looking at a site uh, and I get a chance to visit a lot of car washes every year uh, as a, as a uh, as a mystery shopper, if you will. And uh, amazing, some markets that go in and, and there's not even anybody out at the pay stations. I mean, and the entire market, it, you can't even believe it. And then there are some markets that have started to get more competitive. There are people out there on the pay stations and very rarely do we see somebody out there in a market, all the, all the locations trained and everybody well-trained uh, to do it. That's, that I can count on the fingers of one hand, I've seen, I've seen that. Uh, so I think that um, avoiding those mistakes, don't put enough investment in, don't have enough coverage, and, and don't price yourself out of the market would, I'd say, were the, the biggest things to avoid. Sure, with, uh, with training, maybe incentivizing uh, your attendance if they sell a certain number or convert a, a, a certain number of pay-per-visit customers into members, uh, do you recommend maybe incentives for those employees yeah. to, to, get the, to increase the buy-in? Yes, I think, uh, and you've touched upon another area. I think that um, professional salespeople out on the pay stations is not what we're talking about. We're, look, we're talking about customer service attendants that most typically are rotate. They'll have an hour out at the pay stations, an hour loading, an hour cleaning. Uh, and there are people that you know, are, are hourly workers. Having an incentive over and above, yes, makes absolute sense. If they can make an extra dollar to two dollars an hour, based on hitting certain levels uh, during their pay period, that, that's very effective and very helpful, and, and definitely recommended. It. It's interesting. Uh, you, you you don't want to pay too much either. You don't want to focus people to be heavily sales oriented because eventually you can really drive off customers. So it's like an additional added benefit as opposed to your primary focus and incentives. And again. The nature of the group you're working with there, they didn't come to work uh, as an attendant at a car wash because they, they say this is a great place for professional selling. That's not what's driving them there. Uh, so the training itself has to be, has to fit your population and has to be more customer service oriented than sales oriented. All right, sounds good. Patrick, Jonathan, do you have anything else to, uh, to add on the topic or this discussion here? One, one thing I would add with sure. the 
with incentivizing is uh, we've seen people they'll they'll pay monthly or or even quarterly on that. If you can do it sooner, do it sooner because it, it really helps with the buy-in on what you're doing there when everybody's seeing their return on their work. Yeah. And the only other thing that I would say when it comes to club memberships is the pay station is by far the best place to station somebody trained, giving a concise message and making the customer aware that the product exists, right? That's 90% of the battle. If people don't know that something exists, how do you expect them to buy it? Right. Just because it's on your menu doesn't mean that people see it. Right. But there is another opportunity on site that people should start looking into or at least start start training a little bit on. And that's the lot as well. Right. Because because our customers are going to go through the tunnel and they're going to come to the lot. And they're going to vacuum their car there. And you're going to have somebody stationed out there cleaning your vacuum booms and sweeping and, and all that good stuff. There's nothing wrong with one of your attendants asking uh, your customers, are they satisfied with the wash quality, right? Is there anything they can do better? Are they happy about being a member? If they're not a member, are they interested? Are they aware of it? So uh, just like marketing on site, you were talking about it before, where, you know, you have typically six or seven touch points on site to make people aware that you have the club memberships. This is just another opportunity to, to raise your customer service and your club memberships an additional level. All right, all great points. Steve, did you have anything else to add? Uh, the only thing I wanted to say was, is that uh, it's the industry uh, is really starting to be redefined as a subscription industry. Uh, it's the majority of customers now in most markets, uh, and I say majority, 51% or more, uh, are now coming in, uh, are, are members, okay? That's, that, that change, year to year in the last three years has been unbelievable. And, and it just keeps going on that direction. So uh, I should say it's, it's not, we're probably not there yet, uh, probably a little premature, but that's where it's going. And it's going uh, at a very high rate of speed for sure. Which is certainly great news for uh, not only customers who get value from these programs, but obviously uh, operators and the industry as a whole. So. Car washes are on alert. Steve and his team are secret shoppers and, and coming to a, a wash near you and making sure you're doing all the right things. But seriously, gentlemen, there's, a, there's no car washes. We say it all the time in the magazine. No two car washes are exactly the same. Uh, no two areas are exactly the same or customer bases. So really partnering with, with an expert and a consultant like Brinks or Brink Results or, or another uh, reputable uh, manufacturer or consultant out there is important to, to find the right membership model for, for a specific car wash. So I thank you, uh, gentlemen, for taking the time. It was great to, uh, to see you again today. And thanks again for doing the interview. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Pleasure, appreciate pleasure it. Rich. Anytime. Absolutely. Anytime. This video is sponsored by Mark 7 Equipment, shaping the future of all things car wash. Visit mark7.net for more information.